The movie The Departed has some great game theory lessons, and in this video, we're actually going to learn from a final project from a student in my game theory class. Ruben Tolentino is a December 2023 graduate of Susquehanna University and did an amazing job with this presentation. It's part of the class, the class is fun to teach, and part of why I love it is you get to see all sorts of really bright people come up with interesting ways to apply game theory. Quick warning, there are some spoilers in this video if you haven't seen The Departed and want to see it. With that said, let's go to Ruben. Hi, my name is Ruben Tolentino, and today I'll be showing you some game theory concepts from the 2006 movie The Departed. Throughout this video, I'll be discussing the typical prisoner's dilemma in infinitely repeated games. The main players in this movie are the Special Investigations Unit, William Costigan, Colin Sullivan, and Frank Costello. The plot of the movie goes like this. Frank Costello is one of Boston's most feared crime bosses. He has a large criminal organization, and his power extends all the way to the police via Colin Sullivan. He basically raised him to become his most trusted mole and funded his studies to become an officer. On the other hand, the Special Investigations Unit is trying to get enough information to make a case against Frank Costello to arrest him. In order to do so, they send in William Costigan, a failed police cadet who joins the SIU at the start of the movie. Overall, the goal of both Costello and the SIU is to protect their informant, whereas Costigan and Sullivan are trying to find out each other's identities. Let's start with a simultaneous game between Sullivan and Costigan. Here's your typical prisoner's dilemma. Both players have two strategies, to either reveal their opponent's identity or to cooperate and play their superiors. Both would be better off by cooperating, but that'll never happen. This is because each player has a dominant strategy to reveal the other's identity. They stand to gain more by doing so if the other player does not. Let's take Costigan for example. He can either reveal Sullivan's identity and either get a payoff of negative 5 or 10, or cooperate with Sullivan and get a payoff of either negative 10 or 2. However, all these actions are dependent on what Sullivan decides to do. If Costigan chooses to cooperate and Sullivan decides to reveal his identity, Costigan will receive a payoff of negative 10. Since both players does not know what the other is going to do, they will end up going with their dominant strategy, which is to reveal the other's identity, chasing their best payoff of 10. In terms of the movie, by both revealing each other's identity, they risk their entire career, or death in the most extreme case. This is actually what happens in the movie. When they find out each other's identity, they both decide to reveal the others, and Costigan decides to arrest Sullivan. This doesn't go well for him since he ends up getting killed by Sullivan's allies. However, Costigan actually revealed his identity before his death, and Sullivan ends up getting killed at the end of the movie as well. So, what happens if players actually decide to cooperate? Let's look at the case of Costello and Sullivan. First, let's go over what an infinitely repeated game is. An infinitely repeated game is a game in which the same players interact repeatedly over an indefinite number of periods, following the same rules and payoffs each time. These games can have different payoffs than one-shot games, like the one discussed previously, depending on how players value their current and future payoffs. This is due to the discount factor, which is how players will value their next payoff. This allows for both players to calculate whether they choose to cooperate or betray the other player. In the case of betrayal, two main strategies will be employed in subsequent rounds. A tit-for-tat strategy, where betrayed players will follow up with a betrayal and still maintain their cooperation in the following round, which is essentially the concept of an eye for an eye. Or the other strategy, and is the one that we'll assume is in place, is called the Grimm strategy. Meaning, if a player is ever betrayed, they will choose to never cooperate again. This is similar to the concept of mutually assured destruction. These are the formulas for calculating expected value of strategies in this game type. For cooperation, we will multiply the payoff times the value of expected future payments. For defection, we will take the payoff gained from betrayal and add it to the expected value of all future payments. This will make more sense when we actually go through calculating them. This is the payoff matrix for our game. We have Costello and Sullivan, who both can choose to cooperate or defect. The discount factor is 0.95, as the two have been very close for years. Both have a dominant strategy to defect, but we know that they will end up getting nothing. To remedy this, they can cooperate. However, we need to calculate whether cooperation is actually sustainable. On the right, we can see the expected value of cooperation. We have our cooperation payoff of 2 and the future payments. Multiplying everything together, we get an expected value of 40. On the other hand, we can see that defection yields a lower expected value. It's not worth it for Costello to betray Sullivan to gain the extra point payoff, and vice versa. So, cooperation is sustainable. But what if the discount factor was different? In this example, our payoffs are the same, but our discount factors decrease substantially to 0.4. 
As you can see, our expected value from cooperating also decreased by a lot. It's now 3.33 rather than 40. Likewise, our expected value from defecting is also very low. However, under these conditions, it's actually greater than the expected value from cooperation. So, what happens? Well, defection. One of the players will end up defecting to gain that greater payoff since the expected value of doing this is greater than that of cooperation. Now, the only question left is what actually happens in the movie? Well, cooperation was sustainable. In actuality, Sullivan at one point in the movie finds out that Costell is an FBI informant, which changes everything. It's one of the reasons behind why he's never been arrested. Sullivan feels betrayed and vulnerable, as he's worried that Costello will eventually sell him out to save his own skin. So he takes matters into his own hands. During one of Costello's drug sales, he arrives at the location with nearly the entire police department and attempts to arrest him. Things get out of hand and a lot of people end up dead. Sullivan finds Costello wounded at a secluded part of the site and, well, I'll let the clip speak for itself. How the f did this happen? You're an FBI informant? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Grow up! Of course I talk to the FBI. <laughs> Do they know who I am? Nobody knows nothing. <laughs> oh. Frank. 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 Do they know about me? I know about you, Collie. You know I'd never give you up. You're like a... What, like a son? To you? Is that what this is about? All that murdering? And no sons? Frank got shot. When we lost Frank. I got him! I got Costello here! So to conclude, you can find game theory concepts everywhere. From gaming to movies and politics, everyone has a strategy and some are better than others. Like we saw at the start, Costigan and Sullivan were not able to cooperate due to the nature of the prisoner's dilemma and the one-shot game. However, in the case of Costello and Sullivan, we found that they were able to sustain their cooperation up until the rules of the game changed. I hope this helped you understand some beginner game theory concepts in the lens of simplified scenarios.